Sometimes less can mean so much more. Lily, uh, Lily, yeah. please call the cops. Send them to the Dolphin Hotel. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that take place in one room. But I've got nothing to offer them in return. No, I think you have plenty to offer Dogville. For this list, we've chosen movies that use a single room setting for most of their duration. Movies where a room is the setting for half the duration or less, like the aptly named Room, are unfortunately not included. There's room, then outer space, with all the TV planets, then heaven. Also, the settings must be literal rooms, so if you want to see Ryan Reynolds trapped in a coffin, check out our list of the top 10 claustrophobic movies. No, I can't breathe. Please get me out of here. Get out? Yeah, yeah, get me out. Get me out. Please help. Number 10, Saw. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive. But not you. Not anymore. The highly saturated Saw franchise had a very humble beginning. Made on a shoestring budget and primarily set in a single bathroom, the original film gave horror a new identity. He doesn't want us to cut through our chains. He wants us to cut through our feet. Saw features two men, Carrie Elwes and Lee Winnell, who find themselves chained between a corpse in an unknown location. Neither knows how or why they're there, and only once Jigsaw's voice is heard do they know they're being played. And the game is not fun. Hello, Mark, Paul, Amanda, Zap, Adam, Dr. Gordon. I want to play a game. The plot takes several unbelievable turns as the men are pitted against death and each other in Jigsaw's deranged social experiment. But the action remains relatively confined to a single spot. Oh, what are you doing? Ah, 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 ah. Number 9. The Man from Earth He's everywhere. We just can't see him. The Man from Earth is a low-budget direct-to-video movie. And for all intents and purposes, it should not have been good. Obviously, you have something you'd like to say. Say it. Instead, the film was pulled from obscurity and passed around, becoming a cult classic that's revered for its original plot and mesmerizing dialogue. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. I can't hear a flea walking. I am not in any way Superman. The movie concerns a group of professors who throw a goodbye party for their colleague at his cabin, unaware that the colleague harbors an incredible secret. Is that what they're after, Edith? Oh, stop, Harry. It's shot entirely in the living room of the cabin, and the suspense resides solely in the unraveling of the revelation. The whole BC time is a landscape existing before and behind us, and we move, we move through it, slice by slice. Based on Jerome Bixby's screenplay, it is a masterpiece on the importance of writing. Mm, that's a secret we'd all love to have. Number eight, The Breakfast Club. Eat my shorts. What was that? Eat my shorts. Few movies capture the troubles of teenage life better than The Breakfast Club. And how could it not? Every high school clique is represented in this John Hughes classic, as five vastly different students serve the same detention period. It is now... 7.06. You have exactly eight hours and 54 minutes to think about why you're here, to ponder the error of your ways. Most of the film takes place in the school library, where the reticent kids start warming up to each other and slowly divulge the intricacies of their lives. What would your friends say if we were walking down the hall together? They'd laugh their asses off, and you'd probably tell them that you were doing it with me so they'd forgive you for being seen with me. Don't you ever talk about my friend! Through this development, they realize they're all quite similar, and it's merely the social hierarchy that keeps them from being friends. Why are you being so nice to me? Because you're letting me? There's someone for every person to relate to, which is why The Breakfast Club is so beloved. I mean, we're all pretty bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it, that's all. Number seven. 1408. My only condition is that you do not stay in that room. Based on a Stephen King story, this film about a haunted hotel room was a critical and financial success. And how many people have slept in that bed before you? How many of them were sick? How many of them lost their minds? How many of them died. Number 1408 of the Dolphin Hotel caused the mysterious deaths of many occupants, which leads a horror writer named Mike Enslin, played by John Cusack, to investigate it. 
from all light and warmth. This is six. Scott team five. I think I see the pattern. He decides to spend the night in the room, ignoring the pleas and warnings from the hotel's manager. What follows is a disturbing journey through Mike's own personal hell, as the room warps his sense of reality. Something should happen. Ash is slipping full. I want it to be known that it was an accident. The room did not win. Almost the entire movie takes place in room 1408, even the scenes that don't. If you've seen the movie, you know what we're talking about. This room is evil. Number six. Tape. Oh, I get stranger every year. <laughs> Set in a motel room in real time, Tape stars Ethan Hawke, Robert Sean Leonard, and Uma Thurman, and is directed by the always trippy Richard Linklater. People change. They end up having nothing to say to each other, even if they were best friends a year before. The film was shot on camcorder and revolves around three former friends who talk in detail about their high school years. We've come a long way since, I don't know, High school? You know? The Michigan motel room makes for an intimate setting, and the dialogue is just as intimate, as the 20 somethings reminisce about their interconnected lives. So, Vincent, what are you up to? Me? Yeah. Not much. I couldn't believe you just called me like that out of the blue this morning. Then a bomb drops, and things get dark very quickly. I was totally in love with you that night. Did you love me? Link later, a dialogue wizard, creates such a natural exchange that it's hard to believe we're watching a movie. And the brilliant acting and tight setting are equally responsible. So I thought you would appreciate it. Well, I don't. Well, why not? Number five, My Dinner with Andre. We can't be direct, so we end up saying the weirdest things. My Dinner with Andre is a conversation between two people at a restaurant. That's it. You know, suppose you're going through some kind of hell in your own life. Well. You would love to know if your friends have experienced similar things, but we just don't dare to ask each other. No, it'd be like asking your friend to drop his role. The film stars Wallace Shawn and Andre Gregory, who also wrote the screenplay in a performance that walks the line between acting and reality. The exchange is scripted, however, and the scenes are properly directed. Our, our minds are just focused on these goals and plans, which in themselves are not reality. No, goals <laughs> and plans are, are not I mean, they're, they're fantasy. They're part of a dream life. While the subject of performance art is one that is broached in the nearly two-hour conversation, many others are discussed, ranging from electric blankets to the meaning of life. Life becomes habitual, and it is today. The dining table is the only true setting, which allows the dialogue primary focus. The stripping of film's habitual conventions makes this one-room film one of the most unique viewing experiences. In other words, I'm adequate to do any sort of a task, um, but I'm not adequate uh, just to, to, to be a human being. Number four, rear window. Intelligence. Nothing has caused the human race so much trouble as intelligence. Alfred Hitchcock was known for making a lot out of a little, using high concept ideas in low concept settings. And Rear Window is the very definition of that. I wish I could be creative. Oh, sweetie, you are. You, you have a great talent for creating difficult situations. Often considered the peak of Hitchcock's filmmaking career, Rear Window tells the story of a peeping Tom, an immobile man played by James Stewart, who spends considerable time watching people from his apartment. But it's not perversion that motivates the man. It's murder. Why? Why would a man leave his apartment three times on a rainy night with a suitcase and come back three times? He speculates that his neighbor committed a crime, and the rabbit hole gets deeper as he continues to watch and unfold the narrative from his wheelchair. The rear window room is the film's primary setting, and the Peeping Tom concept has inspired countless adaptations, including 2007's Disturbia. That wasn't me. Wrong guy, wrong house, wrong, wrong, just wrong. Number three, Reservoir Dogs. I got the diamonds. <laughs> my boy. Said to be the godfather of independent cinema, 
1992's Reservoir Dogs displayed the talent of a new filmmaker named Quentin Tarantino. With the possible exception of Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs is considered Tarantino's best work, due to its intricate plot that blends comedy, drama, and horror seamlessly. What? Horror, you say? Well, considering that torture scene, yes. Hey, what's going on? You hear that? <laughs> Centered on a heist, Reservoir Dogs is also notable for not showing the heist itself. It only deals with the fallout of the botched excursion, as the criminals meet back at the warehouse. Why can't we pick our own colors? No way, no way. Try it once, it doesn't work. You get four guys all fighting over who's going to be Mr. Black. This empty warehouse is the setting for most of the film, and spurred Tarantino's single-setting fascination, which was perfected in The Hateful Eight. When that sun comes out, I'm taking this woman into Red Rock to hang. Number two, Rope. Good and evil, right and wrong, were invented for the ordinary average man, the inferior man, because he needs them. Hitchcock does it again in Rope which is a more faithful adherence to the single room concept. You know, when I was a girl, I used to read quite a bit. Oh, we all do strange things in our childhood. Along with its minimalist setting, the film was innovative for its real-time pacing and long take approach, nearly 70 years before Birdman applied the same techniques. You are not doing this for the sake of art. You are doing this because you want to feel relevant again. Rope is about two university students who kill their classmate, and host a dinner party to test the strength of the crime. Looks like a pretty small farewell party. Oh, well, uh, we're really killing two birds with one stone. The rise in suspense is masterful, as Hitchcock unveils the perfect crime with the perfect narrative, and cements rope as one of the genre's best. Nobody commits a murder Here. just for the experiment of committing it. Nobody except us. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I ain't a doubter, but I am a questioner. What's the difference? A questioner wants the truth. A doubter wants to be told there ain't no such thing. Let's get out of here, Alan. These people are monsters. Stop it, Nancy. No, no, no. I I want to drink some more. I want to get drunk off my ass. What are you done? Why are they sent to you here? <laughs> well, that's just it. I don't know. In fact, I'm wondering if there hasn't been some terrible mistake. Number one, 12 Angry Men. You're faced with a grave responsibility. Thank you, gentlemen. Maybe the greatest dialogue-driven movie of all time. 12 Angry Men is a masterful example of storytelling. Based on a teleplay by Reginald Rose, it introduces 12 jurors who are tasked with determining the fate of a man on trial for murder. I can't see two slaps in the face provoking him into committing murder. It may have been two too many. Everyone has a breaking point. The jurors have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that the man is guilty or innocent based on the evidence presented in court. Well, what do you want? I say he's guilty. I want to hear your arguments. I gave you my arguments. Set almost entirely in the deliberation room, the movie writhes with suspense, intrigue, and climax through nothing but conversation. Now who's got something constructive to say? I'd like to go over something if you gentlemen don't mind. Heralded for its accurate portrayal of deliberation and human nature, 12 Angry Men is a law school staple and is among the National Film Registry selections for culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant films. Now listen, guilty or not guilty? I told you, not guilty. Why? Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite single room movie? Those awful figurines say more about the people in this town than many words. If this is the town that you love, then you really have a strange way of showing. For more confined top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Goodbye, Amy. It was good to see.